Hello there, cutie patootie, math angel. Welcome back. Hello, 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 hello. And a very warm welcome to decaf math ASMR if you are new around here. Thank you for visiting again or for checking out the channel if this is your first time. Today, we are going to be relaxing and reviewing Lopey Doll's Rule. Lopey Doll's Rule. And this is just a little technique that can come in handy for helping us find or calculate limits that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to just with our basic limit rules. So usually this is introduced in first calculus class because it does involve the derivative and we're just going to take our time and chat about it a little today but as always it doesn't matter whether or not you're learning this it doesn't matter whether or not you even like math or hate it. Anybody and everyone is welcome. I'm just enjoying making this time, hanging out in our little math nook. And I welcome you to sit back, relax, and join me too. My guess is that you... deserve a break. We all do, don't we? We all could stand a little break. So, I don't really care if you have 7,000 PhDs. Here, it's all about feeling encouraged, supported, loved, and honestly, who has a PhD in life? Does anyone as anyone. Hashtag real talk. So, I hope that you feel safe and comfortable now. You can zone in and out as you please. Maybe catch a tingle or two. Nice, relaxing tingle or two. And, uh, let's chat about Lopey Dolls Roll, okay? Actually, a long time viewer here, longtime friend of our channel, said that they were learning about Lopey Dolls or wanting to review it. So, we are bringing the decaf party over to them. So, you can actually spell Lopey Dolls a few ways. Back in the day, back in the day, I uh, learned it as basically the hospitals. <laughs> it's still pronounced Lopey Dolls, but it's basically spelled like the hospital. Lopey Doll, but you can also spell it with the fancy O with the hat and no S. Lopey Dolls rule. Lopey Dolls. Like so. Either way, the actual rule itself is actually pretty straightforward, but we have to talk about when we can use this thing. So, it's a little trick for limits, calculating limits. So, basically, one of our first techniques for solving a limit or finding one is to just simply substitute into our variable. So let's start with that. So basically, let's say I'm finding the limit of x squared, I don't know, plus 4 as x approaches 1, okay? So one of our first tools is to simply substitute this value into x. So we'd have 1 squared plus 4, and in that case, it would give us a constant number. So, 5. Okay? 
so there's more behind the scenes here with epsilon and delta definition of limits, but as far as calculations go, we can try to just substitute. Now when it comes to approaching infinity or negative infinity, we can kind of think about things in a similar way. Infinity is not exactly a number, um, so you can't really do infinity squared plus four, but you can consider what happens when my, like, substituting a constant number in and then seeing what happens when that number goes to infinity. So, if you have a very, very large number as that approaches infinity, squaring it, for instance, would make it go off to infinity, and adding 4 would be negligible at that point when you're thinking about that large of a number. So you can kind of do a similar reasoning, but you can't exactly write infinity squared plus 4, so you'd have to break it down a little more, but we have tips and tricks for that kind of stuff. But when it comes to L'Hopital's rule, the situations where that's particularly helpful is when we have these weird situations when we try to substitute either a constant or infinity or negative infinity and we have like a fraction situation and we have something like 0 over 0 so that would be weird if we tried to substitute and so maybe one example would be this is just like one of the most classic ones so I'll just write it here and we'll actually work out this as an example um, I think but we'll save our examples for like another video but this is like such a standard one that I thought we would just work it today after we work out the actual rule but here we have 0 over 0 because if I plug in 0 here for x, sine of 0 is 0, so you have to remember a little bit of trigonometry here. And then if I put 0 on the bottom, I have 0. So what happens if I substitute, if I substitute this value, I get this 0 over 0 form, which is not 1, usually if I have something over itself like 3 over 3, that's 1, and it's not 0, because if I do 0 over 2, that's 0, but not 0 over 0. Dividing by 0 just breaks math. So it's not 0, and it's not necessarily 1, just from the 0 over 0 case. So this would be a typical example of using L'Hopital's rule. And of course, there are other ways to actually calculate this particular one, but um, point being that 0 over 0 is a wonky form. And the fancy word for that is indeterminate, indeterminate form. So there are other situations that make things kind of confusing, so we don't know what the limit is if we substitute that. Aside from just dividing by zero, the confusing part is also as something approaches zero on the top and the bottom. So we basically want to consider which one approaches zero faster the top or the bottom because they have different effects on the overall fraction, right? Our overall quotient there. So that's an indeterminate form. Another situation would be if x approaches infinity and I kind of plug in infinity or consider what happens to our numerator and if that goes off to infinity, again without directly writing infinity squared, but if it goes off to infinity and the denominator goes to infinity, that's also a weird situation. We'd have to consider um, which one approaches infinity at a faster rate, right? Because infinity is not a number, so it's not just, um, we're talking about approaching infinity here, so it's not just, you know, 1 billion divided by 1 billion, which would be 1, it could be something big, but something to infinity and beyond. <laughs> That's really not the right way to think about it, but it's just that infinity isn't a number, so we want to consider 
how quickly something is approaching infinity and that matters in our overall uh, limit or fraction here. So these are indeterminate forms we don't really know, i.e. we need to do a little bit more work and we can have plus or minus infinity here. And there are other indeterminate forms um, like infinity minus infinity. You might think that that's zero, but again, infinity is not a number. And we want to know which one is approaching um, infinity faster, because that would make the difference different. It would affect our difference. And we have all kinds of weird ones like zero to the zero, right? That's really weird because usually anything to the zero, like five to the zero, the power is one and zero to the fifth power is zero, but zero to the zero is weird. And this is all in the context of substituting whatever it is that we're approaching into whatever it is that we're looking at, whatever function we're looking at. If we get zero to the power of zero, this is an indeterminate form as well because we're talking about these pieces approaching these values. Or if we add one to the infinity, that's also indeterminate. You would think one to the power of anything is one, so why not one? But we're talking about this piece approaching one while the exponent approaches infinity. So we don't know the rate in which that happens, but that would affect our overall exponent situation there. So for L'Hopital's rule, we're only really considering these situations, the zero over zero infinity over infinity or plus or minus, and we're talking about fractions specifically, but with these other cases, sometimes you can do a little bit of algebraic work or play around with a little bit to get it into this form, one of these two forms or negative situation to then use L'Hopital's rule, okay? But L'Hopital's rule applies specifically for this fractional case. So the rule itself is actually kind of like what we were talking about, needing to consider how quickly something changes. So if you have one of these indeterminate forms when you actually do the substitution, if you have the limit of something over something, so f of x over g of x, let's say, as x approaches a, and in this case, a can be a constant, but you can also have it be approaching infinity or negative infinity. So you can either write L'Hopital's like this that we're about to do, with A being a constant or infinity or negative infinity, or you can separate out the constant or the infinity cases if you want to do, but it's the same thing. So what it says is if we have this and I plug in F of A and G of A and I get one of these forms here, then this limit is going to equal same x approaches that same a, but you can take the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. Ta-da! That's it. That's literally it. So you can take the, this limit is equal to the limit of the derivative of this divided by the derivative of this. Now just for a little bit of review, that is not the same as the quotient rule, right? That's not the same as taking the derivative of the whole thing. You need the actual quotient rule for that. Um, but in this case, for L'Hopital's rule, it is the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom, okay? So, who cares about this? Well, I do, and it's really cool because sometimes this thing is all you need and then when you plug in A here, you get a constant, and that's very handy, like our sine x over x case. 
as x approaches 0. We said before that if we plugged in 0 here and here, we got 0 over 0. So we're going to use Lopi dolls, and um, in this case, just for this example, so that means we can take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. If you didn't remember that, don't worry about it. If you did, good job, and also don't worry about it. And the derivative of x is 1. So when we substitute 0 into x here, cosine of 0 is 1, which is one of our special values from trig, and the bottom is 1, and 1 divided by 1 is 1. And L'Hopital's rule says that our original limit is equal to that 1. And like we said, there are other ways to solve this one, but, um, but that is all. So it's very straightforward. You just take the derivative of the top, take the derivative of the bottom, and sometimes that's all you need to really simplify a question. Now, sometimes when you do this and you take that derivative on the top and the bottom, you substitute that a in and you still get something that's 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. It's still indeterminate. Well, this thing can be applied again. So you can take another derivative and keep going. And sometimes you'll get something even simpler. Take another derivative. So the second derivative divided by the second derivative of the, you know, the top and the bottom. Still the same limit. Those are all equal to each other. And so you can just keep taking derivatives as long as you still have one of these indeterminate forms. And sometimes you'll end up with a constant, which is equal to your limit. So, of course, sometimes this doesn't really work. Can't really deal with oscillating situations, like with trig functions that end up kind of going back and forth and back and forth. Um, and it also doesn't work if you end up getting a derivative of zero on the you know, here with that first derivative being zero. You don't want to divide by zero. So, um, yeah, I actually haven't thought about all the situations for this, but that's when you would use it, and that's just what comes to mind here. So you kind of want to keep using it until you get to a constant, um, and only if you have one of these forms. So for the other ones, like 1 to infinity or 0 to the 0 or something like that, you might be able to mess around with it a little bit, um, or maybe kind of set a different kind of function based on the limit that you're finding, the function that you're working with, to get it into this stuff over stuff that gives you a 0 over 0 situation or infinity over infinity. But this is the basic rule, and... cool. It's been a long time since I've looked at it, but it is really handy, and um, we can definitely look at some other questions for sure. But if you are adding this into your toolbox for calculating limits, um, you know, this is just one technique as well, so don't forget the specific form for it, and you can still apply your other stuff with substitution or factoring, um, that kind of thing. So, uh, if you are asleep right now, I'm wishing you sweet, sweet mathy dream. If you're going to continue on with the rest of your day, I hope that it's a good one. And I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. Or enjoyed just zoning out. And I will see you around for more math very, very soon. Thanks for